Good morning, everyone. This is Penny from Wisconsin Land and Water, and I'm the Conservation Training and Membership Services Coordinator at Wisconsin Land and Water. And this webinar is going to be on satellite imagery. And our presenters are Jeremy and Sarah from Ottagaming County, and they will tell you a little bit more about themselves once they take over. But um, just a few things before we begin. Um, I know some of you probably know all this, but I just need to go through it in case there's new people on. Um, up in the top there of your GoToMeeting box, there's a double arrow and that you can select and that'll minimize that GoToMeeting box. Um, so you can see the entire presentation that they're putting on for us. And how we're gonna do this today, um, we're gonna take all the questions at the end and preferably if you can send those in through the chat line and that's also in that GoToMeeting dropdown box and all you do is type in your question and send it to everyone so then we can see that. Um, you can also at the end um, unmute yourself if um, you want to talk online and we can hear you. Um, but the chat might work the best because um, there's a couple people working on this and they can both see the questions and address those as they see fit. Um, I am recording it and so after this is done um, today we'll work on getting it posted on the Wisconsin Land and Water website so you can see it later because I know there were some people that weren't able to participate today that wanted to see it. But for you people that are in the live webinar, we're going to be offering one soil and water management CEU. So um, I'll be keeping track of the participants and at the end if you just want to send me an email at penny at wisconsinlandandwater.org I will um, get your CCA or whatever number you have and I have the paperwork and I will send that in so you can get uh, one CEU for this training. And also at the end I will send out a link that will have um, a short survey that we would like you to fill out if possible. And I think there were, that is about it. Um, I probably should tell you that it, this webinar is provided by the State Inter Interagency Training Committee, which is SITCOM. And I think that's it for me. I'm going to take it, send it over now. I think Jeremy's going to start us off. I don't think Jeremy is on the line yet. Um, he did go to a meeting, so oh, okay. he might be joining. So you're, phone, gonna, so. you're gonna okay. take, so you ready, Sarah? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, so I'm Sarah Frankert from the Outagamie County Land Conservation Department. Um, I do the watershed planning and GIS for the department. Um, I'll be talking about kind of how we use remote sensing um, for kind of identifying conservation cover and uh, tillage practices. Um, this slide here kind of have an overview of what I'll be going through. Um, so I'll just kind of go overview the Landsat imagery. Um, the two different vegetation indices I'll be going over, how to access Landsat imagery um, using ArcMap to calculate the vegetation indices. Um, I'll go over the Esri Landsat Explorer online tool, which is a new tool that came out. Um, how to field verify um, and check your values with what you're getting um, from your um, indices calculated. And then how to um, calculate a minimum um, normalized difference tillage index. Um, so here on this slide, I just kind of have a timeline of the different um, Landsat satellites that have um, been in, going around the earth for I think over 30 plus years. Um, the one that we're going to be, uh, that I'm going to be using is the Landsat 8 imagery, which is the most recent one. Um, if you're interested in uh, more historical and um, looking at trends in your county or for an area, you'd also want to take a look at like Landsat 4, 5, or 7 um, images from them. Um, Landsat is um, cooperatively managed by the USGS and NASA. So focusing on the Landsat 8, um, this is just all the bands that are recorded from that satellite um, with a description of what they're useful for um, mapping. Um, we're going to be using bands four through seven, which are like the red, near infrared, red, and shortwave infrared. 
Um, those are um, good for identifying um, vegetation and discriminating between um, like soil and vegetation as well. Um, so the two tillage index, or vegetation and tillage indexes I'm going to be using are the normalized difference vegetation index. Um, that is positively correlated with green vegetation cover. Um, it's used in um, many egg purposes, uh, forestry, um, just general land management. Um, you can use it um, identifying crop health in an area if there's a drought or um, you know flooding or whatnot or too wet. Um, and then uh, I'll be showing how kind of how to identify cover crops by looking at kind of the imagery from certain times of the year and how to use that. And then the normalized different tillage index is positively correlated uh, with crop residue cover and green vegetation as well. Um, and then here it just shows the different um, bands based on what um, Landsat satellite you're using, um, which bands you'd use to calculate that. Um, so now I'm going to go to the um, USGS Earth Explorer website, which you should see now. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go to the location that you're interested in. I usually just zoom to what I, where I want. Um, the imagery for, you can also type in an address. Um, so then I'll just click Use Map, and it'll kind of highlight that area. Um, and then down here, it'll be like a date range. Um, so you can type in um, what time frame you're looking for for Landsat satellite imagery. And then you can also go to the results options and um, choose how many records you want that to return. One important thing is you will need to create an account to be able to download the imagery. Um, so after you've um, done this part, you can go to, back one, to data sets. And the one that we are interested in would be um, Landsat. And then Landsat collection level one, um, which has the higher level um, processing done to it and of quality um, for calculating these indices. Um, for today's example, I will just do the Landsat 8, and then I will go to results. Um, then it'll give you all the results of any of the images that have been taken. Um, the Landsat 8 goes around um, every 16 days it circles, so there should be an image um, for your location every 16 days. Um, one important thing when selecting images, you don't want to choose an image that has a lot of cloud cover or has cloud cover for the area you're interested in. So this would be a bad image. Um, so you have a whole bunch of tools here next to each image. Um, and then it'll tell you the date as well of when that image was taken. Um, so the foot kind of just shows you the footprint of where it is. And you can also um, overlay the actual image. You can compare other images, um, show the metadata that's all associated with that image. Um, you can do bulk downloads if you want to um, order a bunch at once. Um, I usually just use this download. It gives you a few different options. Um, the one that we want is the level one geotiff, and that'll um, have all those different bands that we need to do our calculations on. I'll click download for this. Um, so that'll take a few minutes to download. Um, I would recommend, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, saving it on your hard drive and not on a network drive since it can get quite large if you're downloading several images. Um, so I'll go to ArcMap since I've already downloaded that. Um, to calculate these indices, you'll want to make sure you have the spatial analyst tool enabled. On your arc maps, we're going to customize and then extensions. And then you're going to want to go to where you extracted um, your downloaded zip file. It's going to have a long name, as you can see over here. Um, it'll have the date and then the processing date. And then you can see here all these bands that come with it. Um, so I'm going to add to the map the bands that we're going to use. Um, so bands four and five are used for the normalized difference vegetation index. Um, that's for the green cover. 
And then bands six and seven are used for the normalized difference tillage index um, so that um, detects green cover and just crop residue cover. Um, the first thing I do once I add them is I'll just shorten up the name. Makes it a little easier. Um, then you're going to want to go to your ARC toolbox, and the first one I'll do is the normalized uh, difference tillage index. You're going to want to go to your spatial analyst tools, and then you're going to want to go to map algebra, and then raster calculator. Um, so this will show up, and it'll have all the layers that you added in there. Um, I already have the formula typed out, so I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. Um, so um, this is the tillage index one. Um, important thing to note is you want to add in the float condition um, that's over here on the side. Um, otherwise, it will not correctly calculate for you. And I'll just run this. It does not take very long. Um, your values that you get should be from negative one to one. Um, if you want, you can clip your imagery before you run it or um, clip it after if you want to your county boundary or watershed boundary or whatever area you're interested in. Um, and then you can go in and kind of symbolize, get a better idea of what's going on. Um, so um, the brown colors here are going to be like the bare ground, um, no um, crop residue or green cover, um, while your yellow ones are probably more um, the um, fields with residue cover on there are kind of the brown leaf matter. This is kind of a, I think this is a November 25th of last year photo. And then your um, greener color is going to be the high residue or um, still green cover. Um, you can do the same thing um, for the normalized difference vegetation index um, using the bands five and four there. And that too should have values between negative one and one. And you can kind of symbolize however you want as well. Um, so for this one, your darker blues are gonna be um, you know, fields with either cover crops or alfalfa still in the fall or high or any green vegetation that's still out there. Um, and then your lighter browns are gonna be the bare ground. Um, there's a couple of different ways to calculate the normalized different vegetation index in ArcMap. Um, you can also use your image analysis window. So you go into Windows, Image Analysis, um, and this window will pop up. And for this, we'll actually use the multispectral band that comes with your download. So I'll add that to our map here quick. Um, as you can see, this is kind of the more natural looking um, photo that you would see or use as like a base map of imagery. Um, this has all the bands in it. Um, so once you've added that, you want to go into your image analysis window. Um, this button here is the options. And um, on the NDVI tab, you just want to make sure that you have the correct bands for red and infrared on there and then have scientific output checked. And then once you click on that and highlight it, um, this little green leaf will come um, 
um, green and not gray. Um, and that, once you click that, that'll automatically calculate the normalized difference vegetation index for you. And I close that fairly quickly um, and give you the same output. Um, and then another thing is the Esri Landsat Explorer online tool. I just came across this recently. Um, it's fairly new. Um, so you can go to this website, landsatexplorer.esri.com, and it'll actually, right now I have it um, on the NDVI index. Um, so this is an August 30th photo, and it'll automatically index. Um, and you can go through and view different um, times. Um, as you can see here, um, there's probably heavy cloud cover that's um, masking what's actually underneath there. And as you can see, as we get later in the year, you're getting more of the brown and um, less green vegetation coming through there. There's also the options if you're interested in any other different um, indexes from the Landsat Im imagery that also you can um, choose here as well, and it'll automatically calculate those. And then you do have the option on this tool um, to export um, your area of interest. I can click on it. Um, the pixel size as you zoom out is much greater of your download, so it's probably best to download a more zoomed in area. Um, but that's just another way of getting that uh, normalized difference vegetation index. Um, another important thing to do is to field verify the values that you are getting. Um, so to do this, um, we use our collector um, for field verifying like cover crops for contracts that cost your contracts that we have. Um, so last fall, we um, the timing worked really well with um, the slants at eight photo from November 25th um, when they were out there verifying from November 6th to the 30th of the same time. So you want um, you could just go out there and take GPS points and record the data as well if you don't have access to the Art Collector app. Um, I'll show you how we do that. Um, so this is the NDVI calculated for that same time period. And um, so these are field boundaries that I took from the fields that they had gone out and uh, field verify the cover, cover crop. Um, percentages of those fields of cover. Um, so you'll go to spatial analyst and what you want to do is calculate zonal statistics for each field. So you'll do zonal statistics as a table. Um, your input is going to be your um, field layer or feature zone. Um, my zone fields aren't popping up for some reason right now. I have a join on that already. Um, and then you want to put in your NDVI layer. And then you want to calculate the mean or average NDVI for that field. And then that'll spit out a table for you that you can join to your um, crop boundary layer, crop field boundary layer. Um, so as you can see here, this is where I joined that mean value that was calculated. Um, and then here's that cover percent that was actually observed out in the field. Um, so then you can take those and export it into Excel. And you can create um, kind of a graph here to kind of um, you do a box plot or like this to see which um, values that you're observing are actually correlating with your percent cover. We had a pretty good correlation when I did this of 0.87 R square value. Um, so then by looking at the um, observed values with what's um, calculated for NDVI, I can kind of change my symbology or categories for um, 
percent cover based on those values. So in this slide, you can see that um, like zero to 15%, I have negative one to 0.1. And then that just increases and that's just based off of my comparison done here. Um, so another important thing with doing the normalized difference tillage index, um, it's best to get um, several satellite images um, from spring and fall due to um, timing of tillage and planting of the different fields in your area. And I'll provide, provide more accurate uh, estimate of what's going on in that area. I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so I already have uh, calculated the NDTI. Um, so I have an April, uh, June, and the November of last year images. Um, there's two different ways you can kind of do this as well. You can go into your toolbox and do data management. Should be a A composite bands tool, but I can't seem to remember where that is. Um, so this is where you could um, input your different NDTI layers that you've already calculated. Um, so what this does is create a single raster of all three of those bands. I can calculate it and run that. Well, that's running. I'll show you the other way um, using image analysis window as well. Um, you can select um, yellow gold um, icon will become colored um, and that'll give you the option to composite the bands as well and does the same thing. It's much quicker. Um, once you have that composite layer, you're going to want to go into your spatial analyst toolbar um, and go into local and then calculate the cell statistics for that. Um, so I'm going to input one of those composite bands. Um, and we want to choose the minimum statistic, so that'll pull out the lowest pixel value from those three bands. I'll just change the symbology of this one quick. So this then will show you um, the lowest value for each um, pixel then, kind of give you a better idea of um, if that field has been tilled at all that it was in that year time frame. Um, so with all this data, I'll have a good field boundary layer that I'll use and I'll just um, I'll always calculate the average for each um, field that I have using that spatial analyst 
little statistics as a table to kind of aggregate my data. Um, and I use that to kind of get like uh, baseline conditions for the watershed areas that I'm doing watershed planning for. Um, and we're hoping to use like the NDVI um, to kind of track implementation of cover crops and then the NDTI of the no-till and minimum tillage practices. You can also look at historical imagery and kind of um, do analysis to identify trends from your county um, over the past years um, to what's currently happening as well. That's pretty much what I got. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I did create a little how-to um, Word document as well if you're interested in that. Um, it's pretty detailed. I can always email that out as well. Sarah, this is Penny. Um, in the yep. chat line, Craig has a sermon has a question on there. And okay. if we can also post your little tutorial or whatever that you have along with a webinar, if you send that to me, we can sure. post it next to that. Okay. Sure. Um, so how often do we field verify? Um, we have done windshield surveys kind of in the spring and the fall. Um, we get a correlation of our values. It's not as accurate as um, when it happens in the fall for like our cover crop verification is more of a accurate. Um, but we've been doing that just with the contracted fields that we have. But um, another problem is sometimes you're just not going to have a satellite image from that same time period that's going to be cloud free or necessarily work as well. So sometimes it just might not work for you. Anybody else have any other questions? Hey, Sarah, this is Andrew Craig. Hi. Hi. I joined late, so I, uh, <laughs> I've been listening to you for the last uh, 10 minutes. So I don't know if you covered this already, but in terms of doing this analysis, the time it takes to do it, did you cover that already? Or can you kind of summarize, if you're going to do this for like a Huck 12 watershed, this analysis, what's the uh, time commitment? Is it a week, a month, a day? Um, I'd say probably a day or two if you want to do the field verification. Um, getting that data, depending if you want to do like a windshield survey of the whole watershed or just pick some random fields and get a more detailed um, and actually go out to those fields and get more detailed or accurate percentage of cover that you have. Um, downloading the imagery doesn't really take that long or actually running the tools. Um, probably a couple hours once you have your um, field verification data. Right, so it's kind of a combination then, and um, this gets easier if you've done it once or twice, I'm sure, just like any yep. other tool. Yeah. Yeah, and well, another big thing would be having the field boundaries if you're um, aggregating that um, to like an average for each field to kind of get your acres and stuff. Um, if you don't already have an um, accurate field boundary layer, that'll take more time to edit that and to be able to do that. Understood. Okay. Yeah, I was not able to get into the global meeting. I just did this by phone. That's uh, not letting me join, so I can't see some of the things you were referring to. But I'll I'll try to go to what you're going to share with Penny, so I can. Okay. Thank you. Those are all my questions. You're welcome. And it is being recorded, Andrew and others. So um, it will be posted on the website. Wisconsin Land and Water website in the near future. Um, just depends when um, we can get that done, but that will be on there as well. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get CEUs for this webinar, for attending it, um, you can just email me and I will get you signed up. So you get the one, um, I think, which one? We had soil and water management as the CEU for today's training. I see. I see Zach just put a great information. Thanks for the presentation. Thanks, Zach. Um, I sent the survey link out and we did Craig's. I was just looking to see if there's any other questions out there. Otherwise, we'll probably start stop the webinar pretty soon.
Uh, you got anything else, Sarah, for us? Uh, nope, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, um, last chance, everyone. Otherwise, we're saying goodbye. Okay, we're saying goodbye. Thank you, have a great day. And if you have any questions, you can always feel free to contact me at Wisconsin Land and Water. This is again, Penny. So have a great day. Thanks, Sarah. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.